Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another segment of Queering Twilight, the series where I take Stephanie Meyer's terrible book and rewrite it, now with more gay. So now, um, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Chapter 4, Invitations. In my dream, it was very dark and what dim light there was seemed to be radiating from Edward's skin. I couldn't see his face, just his back as he walked away from me. I tried to follow him, but no matter how fast I ran, I couldn't catch up. No matter how loud I called, he couldn't seem to hear me. Troubled, I woke in the middle of the night and couldn't sleep again for what seemed like a very long time. The month that followed the accident was uneasy, tense, and at first, embarrassing. To my dismay, I found myself the center of attention for the rest of that week. No one seemed concerned about Edward, though I explained over and over that he was the hero, how he had pulled me out of the way and had nearly been crushed too. Tyler Crowley, on the other hand, was still in recovery, and I felt extremely bad about that. Mike! seemed to be more concerned that Edward's daring rescue might have impressed me, and he followed me between classes to make sure that Edward and I never got a chance to speak. This irritated me, as I wanted very much to talk to him. The last time I'd seen him outside the ER, he'd seemed crestfallen and nervous. I still was waiting to see if he would trust me with the truth, but Mike's constant presence seemed to be keeping him at a distance. Not that I blamed him. I wouldn't want to spill a secret with the prying ears of one of the school's most popular kids so close. As the week wore on, Mike seemed to grow more confident, sitting closer to me in biology and repeatedly reminding me of the beach trip that would be soon possible. I tried to remain neutral as I agonized on how to tell him politely, that I wasn't interested in him, and to please leave me alone. Then one day, I got the chance. The snow had washed away for good after that one dangerously icy day, and the rain had continued heavily throughout the week. Mike was disappointed that he'd never gotten to stage his snowball fight, but out of the blue made me aware of another event looming on the horizon. In two weeks, on the first Thursday of March, was apparently girls' choice to ask the boys out to the spring dance. It's gonna be really fun, he was saying as he walked me to yet another class, and I could sense he was building up to convince me of something. Don't worry, he said and gave me a little wink. I'll be sure to act surprised when you ask me. I mean, you were planning on asking me, right? Why would I do that? I let the disapproval color my tone. This was the moment I had been waiting for. He stopped short, clearly confused. <laughs> well, he floundered as he examined my face, clearly not happy with my response. We have been spending a lot of time together, so it's only logical that I'd be your first choice. Mike, listen, you're nice and all, but I'm not really interested in going to a dance. If I was, I'm sorry, but you wouldn't be my first choice. His face turned bright red, but he seemed to recover quickly. Oh, I see what this is. You've already asked someone out. Who is it? Is it Eric? What? No! I said, trying my best to keep my voice down as some of the students passing us looked curious. I'm just not interested in going to a dance, that's all. Why not? Mike demanded. I sighed. Because I'm not a fan of dancing, okay? Besides, I was kind of hoping to be able to go to Seattle at some point, and that Saturday seems kind of like the perfect timing to get away now. I was talking at random and making things up as I went, but finally being able to be a little honest about my desire to escape his persistent presence was starting to leak through. You can go to Seattle any other time, he retorted, clearly not willing to let it go. My answer is no, I said firmly. 
and I don't understand why you've chosen me as your conquest, when there are plenty of other girls in the school who I'm sure will be delighted to know that you're free that weekend. Like Jess, I'll bet you 10 bucks she asked you to the dance before the end of the day. He just stared at me, as if my firm stance was somehow an affront to his masculinity. I waited for him to say something, anything, but he just mumbled under his breath, turned dejectedly, and walked away. I closed my eyes and pressed my fingers to my temples, trying to push the anger and annoyance out of my head. I couldn't believe the rush of emotion pulsing through me, just because I refused him. It was ridiculous. When the bell rang, I trudged slowly to class, not wanting to think about how the rest of the day was going to progress now that I had made my stance clear to Mike. At lunch, my fears were strengthened when I saw Jessica's usually crowded lunch table. Mike was sitting next to Jessica and talking animatedly to the girl in question. Jessica seemed to be listening with rapt attention, and I made a split decision not to sit at the end of her table today. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I knew I didn't want to be anywhere near Mike unless I absolutely had to. The Cullens and the Hales sat at the same table as always, not eating, talking only among themselves. None of them, besides Edward, glanced at me as I made my way over to a smaller table near one of the windows. I was just setting my tray down and was about to open my orange juice when a flicker of movement out of the corner of my eye caused me to look up. Jessica was suddenly standing at the edge of my table with her arms crossed. I couldn't tell if she was annoyed or just cold. The cafeteria tended to be one of the airier places in the entire school. Hi, Jessica, I hedged, not really sure what she wanted as she had not exactly spoken to me, except for the first week, when I had asked about the Cullens and Hales. I asked Mike to the spring dance, she said without preamble. That's great, I said, making my voice as bright and enthusiastic as possible. Why was she telling me this? I'm sure you guys will have a lot of fun. It isn't great, she huffed, apparently not catching my tone or not caring. When I asked him, he said he would think about it, because he was waiting for you to talk to him. I was floored. Did he say that I was going to ask him out? He might have mentioned that you were planning to, she stated. I cast a quick glance over at her table, where Mike was watching the two of us intently. A slightly uncomfortable look on his face. A bad sign. I briefly toyed with the idea of telling Jessica that not only had Mike demanded that I ask him out, but had been kind of a jerk about it when I had said no. But I didn't want to be part of any high school gossip train. I had been on the receiving end of one of those back home and wasn't about to get caught up in another. I wasn't planning on asking him, I assured her. I don't really care for dancing and was planning on going to Seattle that weekend anyway. I hoped that Mike says yes and that you two have a lot of fun together. I hoped I sounded encouraging, but truthfully I didn't think Mike was worth any girl's time, not after the way he had acted. She looked surprised by my response, but seemed pleased that I had no intention of stealing her thunder, because without another word she turned and walked away. Jesus Christ, what the hell? I muttered under my breath and returned to my tray, but I wasn't really hungry anymore. Edward was already seated when I got to biology. Without much thought, I sat down next to him. He, he turned towards me, a little startled. Bella, he said curiously, and I turned. Hi, Edward, I said tiredly. He tilted his head a fraction, and his eyes looked worried. Is there a particular reason why you're sitting here and not, well, at your usual seat? I've just had a brush with every teenage girl's worst nightmare. And since no one usually sits next to you, I wondered if you would mind if I started? 
He looked back up at me, a question on his too perfect face. Is this about the spring dance? I nodded. Do you want to talk about it? There it was again. The same question he had asked me on the first day he had ever spoken to me. I looked into his eyes and wondered whether I should. Was it my imagination, or were his eyes perceptibly darker than they had been days before? Not really, I said. I kind of just want to forget it ever happened, you know? He nodded slightly, and I could sense that he understood my sentiment more than I could have guessed. We sat there in a comfortable silence for several minutes before Mr. Banner entered the room, followed by the rest of the students of the class. I saw the tips of Mike's spiky hair and made it a point to look down at my book. An uncomfortable moment passed as I could feel Mike's eyes taking the scene and register that I had switched seats. There was a rush of air as he brushed by me, his haste alone telling me that he was definitely mad. I kept my eyes firmly on my book, clenching my jaw against all the criticisms I wanted to hurl at him. After class, I gathered my books together slowly, allowing Mike to make his dramatic sweep out of the room before I proceeded to Jim. Before I left, Edward called my attention back to him with a soft, Hey. I turned to regard him and was startled to see how worried he still looked. Not that it's any of my business, he said, his voice slightly unguarded. But I would advise to steer clear of Mike for the time being. I don't think he's in a very friendly mood at the moment. What do you mean? I asked, puzzled. I knew that Mike was acting like a petulant child, but he wasn't dangerous. He chewed his lip for a moment, perhaps the most unguarded thing I had seen him do since I met him. Just avoid him if you can, that's all I'm saying. I wanted to point out that in a school of 357 students, that was going to be hard to do, but thought better of it. Thank you, was all I said instead. He nodded, and I left, wondering all the while what he knew that I didn't. In gym, I told the teacher that my ankle was acting up, which it wasn't, but if I intended to avoid Mike per Edward's warning, I was going to use every means available to me. Turns out this had been a good idea since we had moved on to basketball. To pass the time and to keep my eyes from glancing over at Mike to make certain he wasn't shooting daggers in my direction, I decided to get a head start on my homework. When the bell rang, it was a relief, as always, to leave. I would love to have made a break for my truck, but that might have given away to the teacher that my ankle wasn't as a ailing as I had said it was, so I made a show of wincing as I got off the bleachers. Glancing around, I had made sure that Mike was off to the boys' showers before veering out of the parking lot. The truck had suffered only minimal damage in the accident. I had to replace the taillight that Tyler couldn't help but to fishtail into, despite Edward's efforts. And if I'd had a real paint job, I would have touched that up too. When I got to my vehicle, I almost had a stroke when I rounded the corner and saw a tall figure leaning against the side of my truck. Then I realized it was just Eric. I groaned inwardly. Would this day never end? Hi, Vella, he called as I came closer. Hey, Eric, I greeted a bit warily. What's up? He was leaning in such a way that I couldn't get my key into the door without asking him to move. I waited to see what he wanted before I just pushed him aside. I was just wondering, he said, if you would go to the spring dance with me? Oh God, this? Still? Again? I thought it was girl's choice, I said, too tired to be diplomatic. Well, yeah. He admitted, and had the grace to be a bit embarrassed. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be in town, Eric. I said it as reasonably as I could. After all, it wasn't his fault that Mike had already used up my quota of patience for the day. I'm planning on going to Seattle. 
Yeah, I overheard Mike saying that, he admitted. Then why? He shrugged. I was hoping you were just letting him down easy. I was at a loss for words. Really, I couldn't believe how obtuse the boys were being today. Sorry, Eric, I said, working to hide my irritation. I really am going to be out of town. It's cool. We still have prom. And before I could respond, he was walking back to his car. I could feel the shock on my face. Thoroughly annoyed now, I jammed my key into the lock and wrenched the door open. I drove home, muttering to myself the whole way. When I got to the house, I decided to make myself a snack while I waited for Charlie to get home. A slice of white bread, a stick of chocolate, and a cup full of goldfish crackers. Sure, it wasn't the health healthiest of things, but damn it, today had been taxing. When I got up to my room, my phone rang. I was almost afraid to answer it, but it might be Charlie. Predictably, though, it was my mom. She had been calling almost non-stop every day when I got home from school. Apparently, my little email explaining my injury wasn't acceptable, and she had decided that calling me almost every day was the only way to make certain that I didn't meet with another accident. How was your day at school? She asked without bothering to say hello. It was fine, Mom, I said, trying to munch on my goldfish without crunching into the phone. No unexpected accidents? Like I've been telling you for the past week, no. Well, that's good. She said, sounding relieved, or as relieved as she ever sounded. So what else has been going on over there? Nothing much, I said, and flopped onto my bed and attempted to open my chocolate wrapper. There's some silly spring dance coming up in two weeks that I got asked to- You got asked to the spring dance? Mom asked, now sounding more interested. I stopped fiddling with my wrapper. Yes? By a boy? Of course by a boy, I nearly spat into the receiver, but instead took a deep breath and said, Yes, Mom, by a boy. Two of them, actually. Well, did you accept? Apparently it didn't matter that I had multiple offers, just so long as I chose one boy to go with. No, I replied and gave her my Seattle excuse. I don't think that's a good idea, Bella, she said primly. Why? I asked, my suspicions about my mother's motivation growing deeper. You're just so young, and I'd hate to see you waste your time just sitting around and reading all the time. But I like to read, I returned, feeling the old argument rear its ugly head. And that's all well and good, but at your age, it's good to be sociable. I don't really like either of the boys who asked me. Oh, I'm sure one of them is perfectly nice, Bella. I could almost see her hand waving my rebuttal away. Promise me that you'll say yes to at least one of them. I could feel a scream building in the back of my throat. Why was today determined to be a pain in my ass? I'll think about it, I stressed grateful that she wasn't here to see my face. That's all I ask, Mom said, sounding satisfied, as if she had scored a big win. I'll call you again tomorrow. And she hung up. I sat with a receiver to my ear for several seconds before throwing the phone across the room with enough force that I thought I might have broke it. Luckily, it caught the edge of my desk, and the long cord slithered to the ground in a heap. Anger coursed through my veins like a poison. I wanted to throw more stuff, but decided that if I started, I might not be able to stop. Gathering up my snacks, I walked over to my desk and sat down. I had gotten into the habit of leaving my computer on, as I found the white noise helped when I was trying to get to sleep at night, and the heat from the PC kept my room just a little bit warmer than the rest of the house. I woke the computer up and opened a web browser. Logging into my email, I first checked to make sure that no one had messaged me, and my heart stopped. I had a message. The tagline stamped with the familiar symbols and stars to indicate who had sent it to me. Sarah. 
quickly, I opened the email from perhaps the only person I had been waiting to hear from since I moved, but hadn't gotten the guts to write. The email read, Hi, Bells. Sarah. Oh, you probably already figured that out. LOL. Anyways, how was your move? Sorry I wasn't able to message you right after you left, but I was feeling kind of weird about the whole thing, you know? Why did your mom make you move anyway? It was just so out of the blue, Kyle and I couldn't figure out what was going on until Mr. Reeves told us that not only had you transferred to another school, but a new state too? I thought I was living in an episode of the Twilight Zone or something. Anyways, I hope you're doing okay. Write me back if you feel like it, when you feel like it. Peace. Sarah, your fourth witch, babe. I read and reread the email. On my third read, I realized that I was crying. Sure, I'd been getting into the swing of my classes and passing pop quizzes, but all that did was distract from the fact that I missed my friends. I was lonely here in Forks, and Sarah's email felt like a gift from the heavens. I began to type a message back and stopped. Would now be a good time to tell her why mom had banished me out here in the first place? The real reason had to do with her and how I felt? Did she even want to know that? And would it ruin our friendship if she did? I decided to play it safe. For now, at least. <laughs> Yo, know, Sarah, it's so good to hear from you. Seriously, it feels like living in the Twilight Zone out here. If I hadn't gotten your email, I would have thought that you guys were just a figment of my imagination. Ha <laughs> ha. For the record, I'm living in Washington State in a town called Forks. It's gloomy as hell and boring to boot. But at least my classes are all easy. They are truthfully so behind here. As for why Mom made me move, well... I guess she just wanted me to spend some quality time with my dad or some stupid adult thing. You know how they can be. Anyway, it was good to hear from you. Please write me back as soon as you can, when you can. Peace, love, and catnip. Bella, the Bella of Notre Dame. I had just hit send on my email when there was a soft knock on my door and I turned to see Charlie standing in the doorway. I just wandered up here to let you know that dinner's ready if you're hungry, he said. Starving, I returned truthfully and turned briefly to shut my monitor off before following Charlie back down to the dining room. The email from Sarah had served to brighten my mood, and I found my thoughts drifting to sunny beaches and palm trees as I began to eat Charlie's delicious chicken enchiladas. Charlie seemed to notice. You seem cheerful, he said as he took his first bite. Anything special happen at school today? Not really, I replied truthfully. I just got a message from a friend back home. Oh? He continued clearly in a mood to be talkative, or perhaps curious because we were still getting to know each other. I had lived almost an entire life without him, after all. A boyfriend or something? His tone was teasing, but I could sense he was nervous about even bringing it up. Girlfriend, actually. He stopped cutting his enchilada and looked up at me. There was a question in his eyes, and something else as well, something I couldn't quite read. I didn't mean it to come out like that. I mean, my friend Sarah, who was a girl and was my friend, back home. He lowered his eyes back to his plate and resumed cutting. I see, he replied offhand. That must have been nice, getting to hear from a friend. You have no idea. I let the conversation drop, as it seemed that talk of my friend back home had made him nervous. So I decided to change the subject. Dad? I asked. Yeah, Bells. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to Seattle for the day, a week from Saturday, if that's okay. He looked at me in surprise, clearly not expecting me to ask that question. That truck of yours probably doesn't get very good gas mileage, he replied thoughtfully. This was true. But I had more money than I was used to having since, thanks to Charlie, I hadn't had to pay for a car. I know. I'll stop in Montesano and Olympia, and Tacoma if I have to. 
Are you going all by yourself? He asked. Yes. Seattle is a big city, he began, but I headed him off at the pass. Dad, Phoenix is five times the size of Seattle, and I can read a map. Don't worry about it. Do you want me to come with you? You mean you want to spend your time going into whatever bookstore I drag you into, as well as clothes shopping? I could think of a more terrible way to spend my time, he said, and I could tell he meant it. I was oddly touched. Thanks. Will you be back in time for the dance? Damn. Only in a town this small would a father know when the high school dances were. No, Dad. That's the reason I'm going to Seattle. He looked at me, and this time the look was pure concern. Did something happen at school that I should be aware of? I briefly toyed with the idea of telling him what had happened with Mike and Eric, but decided against it. Why make him worry? It wasn't like there was anything he could do about it. No, I lied smoothly. I just don't like dances is all. Oh, was all he said, and didn't press me farther. The next day, when I pulled into the parking lot, I deliberately parked as close to the entrance as possible so that I could make an even easier escape, should either Mike or Eric prove to be even more persistent than they were yesterday. Getting out of the cab, I fumbled with my keys, and they fell from my hand. I reached out to try and stop them, when suddenly a white hand flashed out and grabbed them before I could. I jerked upright. Edward Cullen was right next to me. Where did you come from? I asked in amazement. He looked towards the shiny Volvo, which he had parked several spots away from mine. Oh, I said lamely, and reached out to take my keys from him, which he dropped into my palm. I won't keep you, but I did want to make sure you were okay. His voice was quiet as usual, velvet, muted. You mean, besides the fact that I had to fend off the advances of two block-headed boys? I replied, without realizing what I had meant to keep a secret from anyone else in the school. He shuffled his feet, seeming at a loss for what to do. That's kind of what I meant. My eyes widened in horror. Did the whole school already know that I had turned down both Mike and Eric? I let out a frustrated sigh and decided to be honest. You know what? No, I'm not doing okay. Since I moved here, I've just felt like a fish out of water. I don't have any friends, and yet somehow I have managed to attract the attention of two goons who seem to think that my newness is an invitation to be possessive and weird. And then there's you, who I can't seem to figure out and have a strange habit of appearing at the oddest moments. Kind of like now. I was raving, but realized that I didn't care. All of my frustration from the move and having to go to school while feeling isolated had hit its peak, and I was done. I paused long enough to catch Edward's reaction. He was staring at me, looking more shocked than I had seen him look so far. I didn't know you were feeling that way, he said. How could you? I replied, feeling suddenly exhausted. It's not like I've said anything to anyone about it. Plus... Who would care if I did? I care, he returned. I looked at his perfect face. His eyes were light again today, a deep golden honey color. Then I had to look down to reassemble my now tangled thoughts. You know, he said after a short pause, that week from Saturday, you know, the day of the spring dance, I braced myself for the inevitable question. I heard you say you were going to Seattle that day, and I was wondering if maybe you wanted a ride. That was unexpected. I looked up at him, stunned. What? Do you want a ride? To Seattle? With who? I asked, mystified. Well, uh, with me, actually. He looked anxious almost as if he had never asked anyone to go anywhere and do anything with him, which was absurd, considering how I couldn't imagine anyone turning him down. I was still stunned. Why? Well, to be honest, I'm 
not sure if your truck can make it. And he gave a meaningful look at my large wheel wells. It's sturdy enough, I replied. Why do you think it won't make it? He gave me one of his soft smiles, and I felt my heart skip ever so slightly. It's not the sturdiness that concerns me, but more so the hills in downtown Seattle. I don't think it could handle it. I furrowed my brow. What do you mean, hills? Well, Seattle was originally built on sea level, but after the great Seattle fire and the multitude of earthquakes throughout the years, they decided to raise the city. Now it kind of feels like a roller coaster when you're driving through downtown. My mouth popped open in surprise. Is that true? Sure is, he said. I used to live there back when... Well, just trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Wow, I breathed. I guess that's why my dad didn't want me going by myself. Smart man, Edward returned, then added. So, would you like me to go with you? I considered. Surely it might be more fun to go with someone my own age instead of dragging my poor dad into bookstores and hoping he didn't become bored out of his mind. But then again, the odds of Edward also being bored out of his mind was a high possibility too. I didn't know anything about his interests, what he liked and didn't like. That gave me an idea. Thank you for the offer, but I did sort of promise my dad that he could tag along on my adventure. But, I added, as he was looking like asking me had been a huge mistake. We can sit together at lunch and talk, if that's all right with you. He smiled again, and this time it wasn't half-hearted, but a real, genuine smile. I like it much better. Yeah, he said, I'd like that. I'll see you later. And he turned abruptly and walked back towards the school. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this little segment of Queering Twilight. Um, as always, if you are enjoying this content, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you are interested in supporting me monetarily, I have a Patreon and a Ko-fi. Both are in my About section here on YouTube. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments and uh, I will see you all in the next one. Good night.